So I'm on the bed, uh, four, and I did my research on keylogging. So hackers around the world are trying various ways to ac access people's data, keylogging being one of those ways. So keystroke spyware is a type of software um, that captures and records each and every um, keystroke that is entered on your keyboard. Originally, key loggers were developed for positive, productive uses, um, uh, such as diagnosing, diagnosing problems with the computer systems, uh, monitoring uh, employee productivity, and retrieving lost or deleted data. However, hackers and other cyber criminals have used this spyware to and turned it into a malware for corrupt purposes such as various types of identity theft. These programs that are built by these cyber criminals are made to infect a PC and essentially report any personal information back to the unknown source. So the idea of keylogging was around even before the age of the graphical user, user interface or GUI. Uh, keylogging uh, is used both by uh, law enforcement and other agencies to help in obtaining passwords or encryption files. Uh, a keylogger normally consists of two files, a DLL which does all the work and an EXE file which loads the DLL and sets the hook. Therefore when you deploy the hooker on a system, two such files must be pre present in the same directory. So unlike other uh, types of malicious programs, keyloggers do not pro pose any immediate threat to the uh, system itself. It poses more of a threat to the user since uh, it can be used to obtain the passwords and other confidential information entered through the keyboard. Uh, the only po possible way is to use appropriate security measures since it is close to impossible for a user to actually tell if a keylogger has been installed on, on the machine. So the way keyloggers work is that it needs to get in between any two links in the chain of events between when a key is pressed and when information about that keystroke is displayed on the screen. As more and more ways have been tried, it has shown that the more complex the approach, the less likely it is to be used in common Trojan programs, and the more likely it is to be used in specially designed program, Trojan programs, which are designed to steal financial data from a spe specific company. And keyloggers are divided into two categories, keylogging software and keylogging devices. Keylogging devices are usually small devices that can be fixed to the keyboard, and keylogging software is made up of programs designed to track and log keystrokes. So keylogging can be executed both at the hardware level as well as software level. At the hardware level, there are three types of keylogger devices. Uh, devices that are attached directly to the keyboard cable, devices that can be installed inside the keyboards, and actual replacement, replacement keyboards that have the logger built in. Uh, these physical loggers uh, they do not actually require any physical access to use a computer. Uh, the software side is where the logger is wirelessly connected to the computer, which is connected to the keyboard. Uh, they can be remotely sent and installed on any computer through a simple website, pop-up, or even email. Uh, the types of uh, keystroke loggers, um, so you have the local machine software, you have the ones that are kernel-based, hook-based, passive methods, software keyloggers key that are remotely accessed, hardware keyloggers, wireless keyloggers, which collect packets of data being transferred via, via a wireless keyboard, and you have the acoustic keyloggers, which activates a distinctive sound when each key is pressed and then recorded and translated into a specific key. So how might keyloggers be installed onto your system? When you visit a website, make sure that it's trustworthy. Because uh, visiting untrusted sites may have malicious code in them that exploit your web browser and will silently install a keylogging and capture program without you even knowing it. Although some sites are said to be trustworthy, uh, even the trustworthy ones can be hacked and other personal information can be compromised. Uh, these keyloggers spread similarly to the way other malicious programs spread. Uh, a keylogger can be installed when a user opens a file attached to an email. Uh, when a file is launched from an open access direct directory on a peer-to-peer -peer network via a web page script that exploits a browser's vulnerability or by another malicious program already present on the machine. Uh, 
Obviously, you should also be cautious of the files that you're downloading because uh, they could have the uh, malicious uh, code in them. Okay, so keystroking log keystroke logging has transformed from a helpful tool into a spyware turned against us. However, there are ways to minimize the risks of the keylogging programs. The best way to combat the risks of keystroke loggers would be to install antivirus and anti-spyware software. Most of these loggers come from Trojan horses, viruses, or spyware, and it is of utmost importance that an antivirus program is installed on your system. Besides having antivirus software, there are still many uh, other ways to prevent keylogging software. One way is to be careful the programs that are already running on your computer. Uh, Keyloggers are always concealing themselves and running in the background, so uh, one way to just uh, check is to open up your task manager and just close certain programs that you don't need or seem suspicious. You should also enable your firewalls. Uh, these will prevent outside sources from gaining access to your computer. Uh, yeah, firewalls are highly recommended for people with cable connections because it makes you that much more vulnerable to internet hackers. Uh, you may never know that you're actually being monitored by keylogging software. Uh, so one way to, is to use autofill forms. Uh, that minimizes the usage of the keyboard. And by doing this, information is stored and will not recorded by the keyloggers if you're constantly entering in personal or sensitive information. Another way is to use on-screen keyboards to enter in information. That way your keystrokes are not being recorded and all you're doing is just clicking the mouse button. Uh, you can also use speech to text. Uh, not many people use it, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great way because you don't use your keyboard and it's actually, it's quite difficult to record the voice recognition of the uh, letter itself. Uh, okay, so there is an issue with on-screen keyboards, but uh, so, uh, in some cases, the user's keystrokes are being logged as well as the user's screen. So as the user clicks on the, on the keys on the on-screen keyboard, the hacker is able to not only see what he or she types, but also what he or she sees on the screen. Uh, this is one drawback that really can't be solved besides checking regularly for suspicious programs installed on your system, as well as running diagnostic checks through your antivirus. Uh, this, uh, an, another important thing is to always make sure that you run regular updates. Uh, run updates through your browser, through your operating system, because usually there's always, uh, there's always updates uh, happening and uh, if you're like me, like you see the update and it says restart, uh, I get annoyed by that, but just keep doing it. Uh, you can also set to run automatically on a daily basis or something. Uh, uh, another thing is, uh, okay, a lot of people share passwords, like your best friend, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. <laughs> Don't do that. So we're we're talking about like physical. We're talking about physical access, right? That's like a physical access. You need to you need to guard yourself. Don't, just don't share your password. It's straightforward. So yeah. Keylogging is actually a real issue, and most people only think about it in the movies, like some evil hacker can take over the world and stuff. But they can—it's actually real, and people will take your information, exploit you, take your money and stuff. Uh, you protect yourself. You're the cyber protector of your own system. You should always be checking at frequent intervals if your system has been affected or if your system is maintained properly. Thank you. So um, you mentioned the, the idea of the key logger sort of getting into, uh, I guess, into the driver, the keyboard driver. You know, the right. driver. How, how might you detect that your, um, your driver has been, has extra software in it? Um, so inside the, like, built -in? Well, yeah, the, so, so you, you mentioned that something intercepts, you know, you keep, when the key's pressed, between the keys pressed and released. Right, so, and the uh, software, the software that, that, that does that, okay. Yeah, there's actually a software called uh, uh, Network, uh, it's a company called Network Intercept, okay. and uh, it has an anti-keylogger stroke that interferes with the uh, uh, the relay back and forth. Oh, 
Okay. okay. I don't like Clarence Clay. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. um, you said that it was better um, to use autofill than um, to type it in, and it was better to use auto autofill. But do you think that it's also that's also a security risk since if they got into your <laughs> browser, they would know the password on the autofill? Well, what do you think is better? For a password autofill, it it'll have the dots, right? So that's not a security thing if they see your screen, but yeah, I mean if you if you're entering your address and your credit card stuff and so like Amazon or something and it already shows up, they can see it. But most of the time, um, it's already saved, right? So you don't have to go back to that information and enter it in. It's already stored, and you just press like a button that says check out. You don't have to even access that information. I mean, like um, if it's. It's since it's already stored into your browser because when you click autofill, it'll fill it up from the information inside your browser. What if they hacked your browser or something and got the information? It's <laughs> uh, a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it is stored in your browser. And if they hack into your browser, then or somehow they can drive by. Uh, they can access it. I'm not sure how to actually. It's it. it's that balance we've been talking about between yeah. privacy and security, and now you've found two different yeah. ways of securing yeah. one solution actually causes another set of problems. It's that same balance. Good job. Yeah.